On this week's Most Craved, Wonder Woman is losing an awesome director. Psylocke joins Brian Singer's X-Men Apocalypse. Terminator has a trailer. No spoilers, no spoilers, no spoilers! Hey guys, welcome to Most Craved. I'm Jenna Bush with Legion of Leia. I'm Silas Lesnick with ComingSoon.net. And I'm William Bibiani with Crave Online. Hey, we've got Jason Doring! You know it, girl. <laughs> oh my. I'm saying that to her. Oh, oh. Sorry, thank you. Oh. oh, do you want me to you call want, you, girl? Oh, yeah, a little higher, a little higher. Yeah, there we go. Oh. <laughs> Well, I'm good for the episode. What do you guys want to talk about? Uh, J Jason, Jason Doring, how you doing, man? Good, man. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you yeah. for being on the show. You, you're, you've got a, you got a new movie. Yeah, I do, man. man. Uh, it's cool. I got to play a professional golfer. It's based on a true story, and it's, uh, it's kind of a fascinating story, really. Yeah, that's awesome. Do you, yeah. do, you, do you golf? Is uh, that... I do. I, pl I, pl I play a lot. You know, I, I grew up playing as a kid, you know, so... Um, yeah, Steve Wynn was kind enough to give us his golf course in Vegas, which he had never opened up to a film crew before. So we got to go in there and play, you know, even a little extra when the cameras weren't rolling and that sort of thing. So That's great. totally awesome. You, did you, I'm trying to remember, did you ever get to golf on Veronica Mars? Is that like one of the skills you put on your resume? Yeah, And I can golf. I want to say there was a little, we got to go to the shooting range. I remember that. That was cool. Um, I don't know if we ever did golf. That would have been a great episode. Yeah. <laughs> I was, talk, talk to him for the next movie. To, yeah. To, to, oh, to, to, yeah. yeah. Maybe Moonlight. I think the vampire show I did, I got to do a little, a little golfing in that. Well, nighttime you know, golfing. Business, yeah, cigar and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. It's totally awesome. Also awesome, news stuff. Yes. Oh, that yes. was a really good segue. I'm really good. I like it. Okay. All right, so I'm very upset about this one. The Wonder Woman movie has lost its director, um, Michelle McLaren, who directed Breaking Bad, Walking Dead, Game of Thrones. Um, is no longer working on Wonder Woman. and the Creative differences. Mm -hmm. Yes, the statement was that there were creative differences, and the statement was not from her. So there's all sorts of speculation on what the reason was. Um, I don't know, but I do think this is a major loss because she's fantastic, and I really would love to see what she did. A lot of people are saying, uh, oh, good, so we've got a, a, a director is already lined up for Captain Marvel. Yes, well, that's, I might have been one of those people saying yeah. that. <laughs> Blair Marnell at Crave Online uh, told me that. Yeah, uh, the creative differences, that's always the thing that they always trot out, you know, like irreconcilable differences for, like, marriage, and you always know there's more of a story, mm -hmm. you know, like, like, like she's creative and they're just different or, or, <laughs> or something, right? Like I, it's so frustrating because Warner Brothers explicitly said they're trying to find a female director right. for it. And to date, the only like major superhero movie that's been directed by a woman, unless you count maybe Tank Girl, uh, is Punisher Warzone, mm -hmm. which has a big cult following, wasn't right. a huge hit. Uh, but they tried getting Patty Jenkins to do Thor The Dark World and she only lasted two months before they said creative differences. Mm -hmm. And it looks bad. Yeah. It looks really bad. Silas, you're very quiet. I, it's one of those where, like, I'm, I'm certainly upset because it, it would have been a great, a great uh, film for her. I'd love to see what her work is like on the big screen. I only really know her from television. Um, that being said, I don't know the story. Um, I, and right. I think that, like, they are trying to build this big screen DC universe. You, you don't really know what's going into that. And, like, as we saw with Edgar Wright on, on Ant-Man, there are times where somebody's personal vision may be one thing and the broader vision may be something else. So... I, I'm, I'm sad that it happened. I, I hope she does something even better next. Captain Marvel would be yes. awesome or whatever she wants to do. However, I'm not quite ready to like attack Warner Brothers and be like, oh, you guys shouldn't oh, have done that. Yeah, because no we, we, know, we know nothing. I mean, I've, I'm sure everyone's been hearing rumors, but I don't we know We want to anything. attack someone. We just don't know who. <laughs> J Jason, have you ever encountered that creative differences? Like there was some kind of thing and then like everyone just said creative differences. Is yeah, that how that works? Um, <clears throat> I don't know, man. I, I think I, you know, try to collaborate before that. You know what I mean? Before you get to that, and usually you can find some reconciliation between you and the director. You know, um, I've been fortunate to work on shows where the writing is fantastic, so there's no need to like walk away from anything or whatever. Or if there's like a little thing, I'll just go up and kind of mention it, and they'll be like, "Oh yeah, totally. That'll take that out." Like whatever. Yeah. And I'm like, "Okay, cool. Thanks a lot." So yeah. you should have directed Wonder Woman, and we would have been fine. <laughs> yeah, and then everything would have worked out. I don't know. You, you still know. can. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. You should put your hand in that ring, man. But hand that ring. Yeah. yeah. What, 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 what else have we got? What else have we got? Uh, Psylocke. Going? Psylocke is. Uh, it, it seems like we we keep getting more and more X Men that are joining the cast of. Uh, of X-Men Apocalypse, which All is Brian Singer's. Yeah, he, he keeps adding more and more, and Psylocke is another, uh, uh, sh she was originally actually not an X-Men character at all. She was a, a Captain Britain character. 
She was his twin sister with psychic powers who later took over the body of a ninja and became the Psylocke we know today. Fun fact, based on a true story. <laughs> My life. Yeah, exactly, the Jason Dorian story. <laughs> but actually, you know what, we've, we've had Psylocke in the movies before. Mm -hmm. She was in X-Men The Last Stand, and like, frankly, most of the X-Men characters got totally screwed over. The they keep announcing, like, they'll have, like, oh, multiple man's gonna be X-Men The Last Stand, that's awesome. Yeah, we're gonna totally waste him, and he's gonna be in, like, one scene. Oh, Juggernaut's gonna do it. Yeah, we're gonna completely screw him up and have him reference that, that internet meme. Oh, Emma Frost is gonna be in X-Men Origins. Yeah, we're gonna forget all about she's it and really say she's talk. 20 years older, uh, and then we're gonna kill her off screen. Like, what? I don't know if I should be excited for this or not, because well, they just have a weird track record. This, it, it is sort of a weird thing when you're talking about something like The Avengers or something like X-Men, where you have a lot of characters, and I know that, you know, you want to put all of them in because fan service, but there are a lot of characters, so I don't know who, who's going to get what. But um, Olivia Munn is playing the role. It's not she's a she's a known actress, so um, likely we'll see some more from Psylocke than we might expect. Um, and I know there are some she gets a lot of backlash in some of the geek community, so it'll be interesting to see what sort of reaction her performance gets. I think she's great. She's great on the newsroom. She's very charming. Um, I think she's due to break out. I think she's really, really cool. Yeah, have you ever like? Is there like a superhero or like a, a mutant or any other like comic character that? Because that seems like that's all <laughs> anyone wants to do now. Like, is that ever? Yeah, I don't know. We were just talking about Star Wars sort of before the interview or something like yeah. that. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. Just something with like these supernatural powers where you're able to like you know use the force to fight against each other. I just think that's so cool. It really like gets me excited. You, you just want to get on set and do. I know, I try, and then people just stare back at me. I'm like, oh. So you want to be in a Star Wars movie? High five. Okay, there we go. There we go. Thank you, friend. I, I will point out about Psylocke, though, is, you know, everybody was against Bryan Singer when he, with uh, Quicksilver, and he ended up being Loved the best scene in the movie that in was Days fantastic. of Future Past. So I, honestly, whatever yeah. he wants to do, I'm, I'm fine with. Yeah, I was totally, look at that, that totally changed my mind about Quicksilver, so. Yeah. Right. Well, how do you guys feel about the new uh, Terminator trailer? Have you seen this new Terminator trailer that uh, just came out? I, you know, I've heard it's very, very good. That's what I've heard. It, it looks cool, but they just put out a new trailer that reveals the villain of the film, and it it seems like it should be a spoiler. Yeah. It seems like it's supposed to be like a huge surprise. I don't know if you want to close your ears. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh, okay, because it, it here's does. A, but it, I think it raises an interesting question. If it's in the trailer, how can it be a spoiler? Because obviously the studio doesn't mind if you know. They don't think it's a detriment to, to well, watching the film. I don't know if it's necessarily a spoiler. It's just something that I would have liked to be surprised by in the film. Like I can see putting something like a huge twist in a trailer if you don't think people are going to go see the movie and you want to bring in more people, but. People are going to go see Terminator. It's not like that's a movie that you have to worry about whether or not you're going to have an audience. So this huge, crazy thing, like I would have loved to watch and go, oh, really, dude, cool, but that, but now I know what it is. You know, the, uh, Terminator actually has a history of this. Remember, Terminator 2 came out mm. for a long time. No one knew that Donald Schwarzenegger was playing a good Terminator. Right. Mm. That was like not part of the ad campaign until pretty close by. And if you watch the film, mm. pretending you don't know, it's not clear that he's the good guy until he's in a hallway, there's a T-1000 on the other side, you don't know it's a T-1000 yet, they both raise their guns, and yet the guy we know of as the bad guy says, get down. It, it's all dramatically structured yeah. like he's supposed to be the bad guy, it's supposed to be a big twist, but then I guess Arnold Schwarzenegger just said, yeah, I play a good Terminator. I do the best Schwarzenegger yeah. answer, That the is way. the best Thank ever. Thank you. <laughs> but like, anyway, I, guess, I think maybe they just don't care anymore, they just want to get butts in seats because it's a crowded summer. And they just want to just say, hey, guess who the villain is? And I don't think, it, let's not spoil it, but like watch the trailer. And I saw it and I was like, that is some ballsy, <laughs> some ballsy stuff. We, we're also, <laughs> oh like, I think we're, we're, we're existing in a summer uh, post Furious 7 where like, and this sounds overly harsh to Furious 7, but it's okay to be stupid. Uh, <laughs> like, and I, I think that's a good Terminator. Terminator is well, what it's but like. it's true. Like I want. Like if you're going to do a big, crazy, silly Terminator movie that rewrites the timeline and whatnot, Fine, like I I'm gonna go see it for the spectacle. It, I don't know how important the plot twist is. This is also coming from a studio that uh, did Hot Tub Time Machine too, and actually featured the last scene in the movie in all of the advertising. Yes. Actually, did. It was Which, really weird. I don't. All right. Uh, Jason, we we we're, we're running out of time. Uh, is there anything you you just want to talk about, man? No, no, man. I mean, I'm interested to hear this. This is my first time ever, like, sort of sitting with people who are so interested in film. It's very cool, man. Oh, that's what you we're should, very you should, nerdy. You should you no. should come by more often. 
Okay. You can be our studio audience. <laughs> Cheers, dude. I'll, I'll laugh whenever Thanks, you make man. a joke, okay? Awesome. Thank you. I'm glad someone is. Uh, wh when is the squeeze coming out? When can uh, it's coming out this Friday, April 17th, video on demand and in selected theaters. And it's based on a true story of this kid, and he goes, uh, gets convinced to go to Vegas to play high stakes golf against the mafia. Pretty cool. All right. All yeah. right. That's my weekend. All right. All right, Thank everybody. You. Thank you for watching Most Crave. Follow us on Twitter at Most Craved. Go see the squeeze, and uh, we'll see you next week. Cool. Yeah.